Hi everybody, it's Kevin at Bear Creek. It's March 25th, 2020. Uh, we are uh, a few weeks into this coronavirus uh, pandemic and uh, you know, like the rest of the country, I'm uh, learning to uh, adapt uh, to it. Um, and like everybody else, I'm a little concerned about it, more concerned about uh, the uh, effects it might have on my uh, finances and my job uh, in the short term. Uh, long term, I think we'll get through this just fine. Uh, had a little bit too many hours in uh, recently, so they gave me the day off. So I'm out here at the farm apiary, and, uh, and I'm going to do a little feeding of the bees. Uh, you know, it's only probably about 47 degrees or so outside and uh, not quite um, warm enough to really get into your bees and take a look and see about the health and whatnot. Uh, but I want to do, I, what I do want to do is they do have, you know, sugar on them and they do have pollen patties and I don't need to, to deal with that, but um, I'm going to swap over and I'm going to be uh, putting some syrup on them. It's kind of that time of the year when syrup you know, it's not going to freeze, um, and I'm putting it directly over the top of them so if they can still stay in the cluster and still get to it. Uh, I did this a couple of days ago, a few days ago, back at the home apiary, I think on Sunday, and uh, they're not, they're just barely touching it. They're not really going after it with any kind of reckless abandon, but we're supposed to get in the upper 50s here, uh, probably starting, you know, the rest of the week or getting close to it. It's going to rain in between, whatnot, but uh, starting to get into that uh, that time of the year when, um, you know, uh, syrup is a good thing. Um, you know, let them, let them store a little bit. Let them see a nectar flow. Uh, you know, spur that uh, brood production. That's what, that's kind of what I'm after for that. Um, fill the combs a little bit with, get a, get a little bit of honey because obviously they've gone through. Um, Never count your bees before they hatch. Uh, you know, that's the motto for March, at least in the upper Midwest here. Um, I'm in central Wisconsin, and that cannot be further from the truth. March is the time of the year when we tend to lose, um, you know, probably half the hives that you're going to lose throughout the winter are going to be lost in March. That's what I've found, at least in my apiaries. And I'm, and I'm no different. And I lost uh, uh, in March... I've lost two more hives. Uh, one hive, I think, I believe it was queenless. It was a single nuke. Um, and I saw a supersedure cell in September. And I let it go. I should have just taken it out. But I have a funny feeling that that queen didn't take. There's no drones out there. And they were probably queenless. And when they dwindled down in numbers, they weren't, uh, you know, able to uh, to recuperate. Just too few of bees in there. So... They, they did die out, and you've seen that video. I talked about it actually in my last video about that specific um, nuke. Uh, the other one uh, was a nucleus, double nucleus colony behind me, and uh, I was here two weeks ago feeding it uh, a pollen patty, and um, it was not terribly bad. And um, I just opened her up because all the other hives looked like uh, they were... They were doing okay, except that one. So I opened it up, and sure enough, all the bees were dead in it. I, and I haven't figured out why. Uh, it was a little uh, damp in there. I can't imagine how there's plenty of ventilation everywhere in that hive, and I can't unless uh, somehow when, when it rained, they got water in there, and that created uh, just too humid conditions for how cold it was. That, that very well could be the case. I, I'm just not sure. But uh, regardless, there wasn't a ton of bees like laying dead, uh, so it was probably a weak hive to begin with. Um, another thing I do, you know, uh, being March 25th, it's 40-something degrees. Bears are going to wake up, so I brought brought out the bear, uh, um, the electronics for the bear fence, and I'm going to set that up today. I'm going to do something a little different this year. Um, I'm going to put it up, up a little higher than it was last year but for now I'm going to set it up just like it was last year I didn't bring out the stakes for it but getting that time of the year the the females are coming out with their cubs and they're going to be hungry 
uh, you know, the cubs that, uh, that were born over the winter. Um, they're going to be hungry, and uh, this makes a really, really nice target uh, for, for uh, female, female bears, and even hungry male bears, too. Um, they're opportunists. It's what they do. There's not a ton of bears around this area, but they have been spotted, so better safe than sorry is, is what they say. Um, you know, I'm down to uh, 11 hives now out of 20, so I'm at 55% for the, for the winter. Um, you know, not spectacular by any means, but not detrimental by any stretch of the imagination either. Uh, with 11 hives, I can do just fine. Uh, so, you know, still happy with that uh, coming out of winter. I do have a, a four queens, um, Carney Owens, New World Carney Owens coming. That probably won't be here till June. Um, and then I'm going to be doing my queen, my own queen breeding, but bringing in new genetics. That's that's in the works. Uh, I do have a couple of packages coming, and those packages are coming. Um, although they're Carney Owens, um, they're going to be specific for my home apiary to uh, for um, scavenging brood from to uh, populate nukes, um, mating nukes, and things like that. That that that's my plan this year is to. Uh, Use this yard for honey production. Uh, I have a little area set up over there for my for my mating nukes. And then um, I was sitting out here the last uh, few weeks ago, and uh, a guy drove by on his bicycle, and he was kind of like, he's just doing circles out there by my truck. So when I walked back out there, um, he was just talking to me about my, my bees. He's a wildlife biologist for the state of Wisconsin, and uh, we start to chatting. And uh, he's got a place about a mile, a mile away from here, and. Um, and he was interested in me putting bees out there. And, uh, you know, although that's only a mile and my bees do forage that far, it's actually a good area for me to put um, my, um, the hives that I want my queens, my overwintered queens uh, from my nukes back home um, over there. And I can, um, and that, that'll be good for, uh, for getting drones uh, coming from from that direction, and then plus it'll give them forage from the other side. But uh, having you know drone areas uh, spots surrounding this area is good. You know, about two and a half miles up the road, the commercial guy drops his bees off every summer, probably in I think sometime in mid June. I think he drops them in there. Um, so that's going to mix with my bees, and I can't stop that. But it's kind of good not only to have the drones from my hives around here, but also having drones from that area over there, which is essentially away four miles away from that guy over there. So if my queens end up heading that way, uh, that'll be a good thing, and I'll get I'll get my queens mated with those drones over there. Um, I'm also going to keep a high colony back home. Uh, that'll be my breeder queen uh, or queens for the year. That's where I'm going to do my grafting from. I'll do my grafting there, then bring them over here. This will be my mating yard, uh, just probably, I don't know, 100 yards from, from this over here. And uh, that's my plan anyways for the year. But um, again, you never count your uh, bees until they, till they hatch. Like I said, uh, you know, March is the, is the great equalizer for your bees. So, you know, you're really not gonna know what you're starting with probably until the beginning of April. But uh, the rest of the hives look fairly healthy from what I can see, and uh, we just go from there. So um, I, 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 I really did forget what it's like coming out here and all the stuff that I have to bring with me. Um, you know, I've got, I've got lids right now that I, that I have, but I don't have uh, uh, feeder holes put in them, so I had to bring a bunch of lids over that have the feeder holes already drilled in them. Uh, I had to bring a ton of buckets uh, over here to uh, to feed the bees. Now I've got uh, frame feeders in each of my hives, but it's a little cold um, for frame feeders for the simple reason that they have to break cluster to actually go in and and get the food, so they won't do it. But if the feeder is right above them, then they can access the syrup a lot a lot easier, a lot, a lot easier, and they don't have to break cluster and get off of the brood. Um, so, so that's why I kind of got a dual system going on for feeding my bees. Um, in late spring, I can go, um, 
and do the frame feeders in early fall after I pull honey. My frame feeders are what I'm going to be using to get my get my hives up to weight. Um, they're not quite, they're not clustering yet. It's still August, September. They're not clustering. They can go in there and and, and uh, get the bees, and it'll stop the robbing. And we won't we won't have the robbing issue that like, uh, like you do tend to tend to do with the buckets leaking and whatnot all over the place. So that's my uh, that's sort of my system going on. And uh, anyways, let's. Uh, I'm sure you've seen people feed before, but that's what I'm going to do right now. So let's go over here. See how this doesn't have the feeder hole on it? Oh, there's a lot of bees in there. But, that's what I thought. Look at all the water. Yep, that's what it was, it was moisture. This, this uh, frame is loaded with moisture. Not sure what, why or where it came from, that's a lot of water, and that just happened. I saw one other hive that that happened to, too. Um, I don't know how the water's getting in there, but a lot of water got in there, a lot of water. That's not condensation, that's from rain. That's dry. That's dry. Good. So I'm going to steal this. And I'm going to steal this. Boy, look at him tear up that.
pollen patty. That's good. Okay. that alone. Okay. Cool. So be it. That didn't go so bad. Uh, got all the hides fed up. Uh, the hides are sort of medium strength, I'd say. Uh, you know, in, in, in all my years um, coming out of winter, uh, I've never come out with a, you know, just an absolute powerhouse uh, in March. Um, May, yes, by May, yes, I have seen it, but, but not coming out in March. Um, like I have seen in some uh, other apiary videos that I've seen. But uh, happy with uh, where I'm at. Uh, what I wanted to do was um, get back to um, the portion of the video that you saw uh, where that nucleus colony had died and I had pulled out that one frame and shook it out and you saw all the water that 
that had poured out. Um, in the other box, I didn't show in the video, um, every single frame in the lower box was um, absolutely full of water. Um, and there was probably two pounds of bees. This was a pretty, pretty strong uh, hive two weeks ago that I put it on and it is quite apparent that whatever however the water got in there um, the bees picked it up and stuck it in the comb itself to try to put to try to give it a, a spot a uh, place to put it but the humidity in the air and then it, when it gets cold at night probably provide too much of a chill for them and um, they all ended up dying which sucked um, I've seen this a couple of times before. Uh, last week, um, I had a video, and I think I showed that video as well, um, where, you know, I, here at the home apiary, I had a two-frame, or a two, a five over five nuke uh, that was loaded with water and was pouring out. And I was able to save that one, even though quite a few bees had died in it. Um, there were still plenty of bees uh, alive. I took off the lower box, shook out all the water, um, and literally just, I gave them a normal bottom board and just set the one box back on it. Uh, and they're still doing good. Uh, I saw this one other time before last year, and I didn't really pay much attention to it at the time. And what I'm kind of coming, I'm sort of seeing a pattern. The boxes that I'm having this problem with, the new, which I've never seen this in a in a ten frame box. I've seen this in my uh, my nucleus colonies, uh, and they're the ones that I have a fixed bottom on with. Um, a three-quarter inch hole drilled in instead of the you know the full um, I don't know nine inch um, opening in the bottom uh, with an entrance reducer or something like that it would just be the hole with the little uh, dial that I use and those are the hives that I'm seeing that this is occurring on and I don't know if it if this is happening because of rains and the bottom is getting See, when I drill the hole, I start the hole probably about, you know, half an inch or so, maybe an inch above the bottom board. And so it leaves that much to hold water in the bottom that doesn't drain out. And I'm wondering if that's somehow water is getting in there and water is just sitting in the bottom of these um, boxes and unable to get out. The bees just go in, pick it up. And they stick it in the in the frames themselves. I don't know that, and so that's why I'm I'm talking about this now. I'm I'm putting it out to my followers to see if anybody else has seen this before, um, where almost every frame is just full of water. Uh, this is not a condensation issue. This uh, this it's just impossible to get that much condensation in a nucleus colony. Um, I shook out probably, well, that last week, I probably shook out 15, 20 pounds of water out of those, out of those combs. It was that, that, they were that full of water. Um, I don't know where it's coming from, but it has rained quite a bit here. And I'm just wondering if somehow it's getting into the bottom board and the bees are just picking it up and just sticking it in the cells. And then they get chilled out because there's so much moisture in the air. Um, and this only happens in March from what I've seen during the summer. I don't have any problem with these boxes and during the winter, these boxes have proven to be pretty good. It's, it's March when I've, I've had this, had this issue with my, my, with a few of my hives, not all of them, but a few of them. Um, so I'm, if you, if you've had any experience with this, if you're a Northern beekeeper and, uh, you've seen this before. Uh, shoot, shoot me a note in the comments and let me know. Um, you know, I appreciate guessing, and, and guessing is good, uh, but guessing doesn't really 
go anywhere. Trust me, I've guessed enough as it is. I've put this to uh, a couple of uh, my friends from my from my upper Midwest beekeeping group. Uh, nobody else has run into this yet. Um, but they have different configuration than I do. The reason that I'm I'm I ran I built those type of hives with just the hole instead of the full open bottom. It's easier to transport them. I can just close the dial up, pick up the nuke, set it in the back of my pickup truck, and take it to a another apiary. Uh, and it works fantastic for the summer. But for the winter, I'm thinking that uh, that I should go with the the one with the uh, full open bottom. Uh, it might be a better better bet for me. Uh, again, this year was an experiment. I didn't wrap my hives, uh, any of them, and uh, I still got about fifty five percent. So I'm I'm doing pretty good uh, for for. Um, it's probably my best year uh, for overwintering. Uh, full venting on the bottom on all of my hives. Uh, you know these hives that I was telling you about with the water. Not only does do I have the three quarter inch bottom. But in that bottom box, the back of the box, I have a three-quarter inch at the top. And I've got uh, uh, screening over that on, on the back of the box. So I got cross ventilation in there as well. And, uh, and not only that, now i got a shim on top. And it's got a 5 eighths inch opening at the top for the bees to use as an upper entrance. That's where I put the... Uh, mountain camp sugar so so it's got plenty of venting so that's not that's not the situation um i'm i'm really thinking that it's because of the the whole configuration i'm thinking that i'm going to need to open that whole bottom up uh rather than just just uh just having a hole but like again if you've seen it before shoot me a note let me know and uh maybe we can come up with uh a definitive answer on this problem but uh, spring is here uh, I want everybody to uh, you know heed the warnings about this coronavirus you know stay home that doesn't stay home doesn't mean you have to be inactive get in your bees go outside you know just keep your distance from everybody wash your hands uh, and just and just you know just practice uh, social distancing like they say and uh, you know what? It won't be too long, and we can all get through this, and we can get back to our normal lives, and back to our making it a living, and and uh, providing for our families, and you know, and everything else. So, uh, until next time, take care. Happy beekeeping, and remember, all beekeeping is local. Take care.